the reality of, of the life of acting all the time is different to the perception. So, um, you know, I didn't always enjoy it, even though I've had some really great times. I haven't, you know, it's not the most sort of fulfilling career. Well, I didn't find it that way. So there's lots of other good things to do, I think. And that's, that's all. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Mia Vazikovska is an actor. She sat down with me in cyberspace to talk about the work. Let's start in the present moment. I want to make a a bold assumption. You can tell me if I'm wrong, Mm -hmm. and then we'll go from there. You've turned down a lot of projects. You turned down things that good people write for you. Like they probably tell you they're writing this for you. You turn them down. Uh, Blue back did not end up on that pile. Yes. Tell me why. I'm really good friends with Robert Connolly, the director, who I adore. Um, He gave me my first chance to direct a film when I was 23, and there was no reason why he should have sort of trusted me with this um, excerpt from um, The Turning, which is like an anthology that he was, that he produced. But he did, and we've been great friends since then. I think that was probably 10 years ago. And um, it was middle of the pandemic when he sent me this script. And I, I mean, I adore him and he has a way of being so enthusiastic and, and excited and full of heart in a way that just uh, is, I don't know, really inspiring. Um, and, and I think this film was a bit like that. Like he gave me the script, I read it, that night and then the next day I was like, all right, I'm in. Um, I'll go to Western Australia and swim around and that's why not? It's so I was so ready for something that was very uh, heartfelt and sweet and moving and, and it really made me think of my nephews and niece that are all growing up in regional Australia on the coast and um, how much it sort of felt like their life a little bit and how you know, hopefully it inspires, you know, some young women to also, you know, pursue their passions and, and also to be more conscious for our, for our environment. So I just thought it was a combination of things that um, I got really excited about. You have to act underwater. You're doing a scene <laughs> under there. That's and true. Like, and the other actors are doing like crazy amounts of like, beats they have to hit kind of underwater first of all it's so hard to film like i don't think people realize just a regular scene is so hard (laughs) then underwater so you're not just on you yourself underwater which is kind of crazy because you have to you can't breathe (laughs) Mm. yeah but then there's a film crew there and you have to do things (laughs) to get the day done but it kind of simplifies things because there's not much you can do when you're underwater, you know, gravity's working against you. So you you kind of don't have many options, which, which is kind of great. Right. It focuses you, I guess, right? It focuses you. Yeah. Or it's just, there's so many limitations that you don't, you know, I, I felt like we only, I only really had two days in the pool, but, um, uh, some of the beats were quite simple, like I'll go down and I'm looking for the fish and then I see him and then I smile and that's sort of it. <laughs> but yeah, and I, you know, I feel like I go down and all I can feel is, uh, you know, the kind of gravity and the goggles and I don't have much control over my face and I'm sort of just going through the motions, but I don't know if it is registering and I'll pop back up and Rob's like, that was great. I was like, hey, I don't know what happened but if you're happy then i'm happy so. you're, al- you're also looking like you don't you're not stressing uh, uh holding your breath oh good are, are, are you an avid swimmer i do really like swimming i feel i feel very at home in the water so i wasn't too stressed about that which is good i was first confronted by your talent with in treatment 
And right. that that show was like a, a miracle show for me because it was like um mm. it was like a it was like plays every week that mm. you just get to see you just get to see these amazing actors. Like I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe like that the, they were allowing this to be a show. Two people in a room. I I, I always said if you just put two people in a room. Uh, you don't need anything else if it's if it's good if the people are good. Yeah. Uh, and the people were good, but you were only 16. Mm -hmm. You were the standout for me. You were only 16. Can you talk, and, and it might be hard for you to talk about about your, about your oh, what I'm going to ask you to talk about. So maybe just we'll talk about her in the third person, Mia as a 16-year-old. Why was she so good <laughs> at 16? You know what, I mean? what, what, what was it that uh, allowed the cynical uh, of, of 38 year old probably at the time mm -hmm. uh, to be so captivated by this acting I, I don't know um, it it was such a great job it was my first job in America and um, yeah it was you know again just uh, you know Rodrigo Garcia who I'm still really good friends with was the showrunner and, and the director of you know a lot of the episodes um, he cast me in that and, um, you know, completely trusted me with this really wonderful, complex character. And I, I don't really know. It was just, I could just picture her in my mind when I read it. I mean, the scripts were so beautifully written by Sarah Treem and the character just was full of life. And I was so um, captivated by her, the character, and, and uh, just had a great time. I just loved it. It was like, you know, it was like, um, ended up, I think it was nine episodes. Each character got nine episodes. So that's more content than you get sort of across two films, I think. Exactly. But it was so fun. And, and I think it was just very simple. Like the scripts were written so well and, and, I, and I felt confident sort of in the way I felt her from the script. So it was, I had a great time on that job. Were you, were you already thinking like you said, I, I see her. Were you already thinking like that, like um, um, as as a as a kid, of, you know, in your middle teens, uh, of, about characters like that, or or were or were you still just thinking like, um, oh, I could do this because it's kind of close to me? Um, I don't really know. I don't. I think when you're sort of still quite young, you're not super conscious of how you're doing things or what you're doing. It just that's always a, you know, I mean, a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, I guess as you go older, you want to increase your consciousness, but um, it was, it felt very easy to just picture her from, <clears throat> from the scripts. And it was sort of simple like that. I mean, yeah, just, just felt, felt, felt her on the page. And then, you know, I think that's probably similar to still how I work, but at the time you, you know, I don't know, you uh, don't think much about it. You've said many times in interviews that there was this shift that you made where you gave up this idea of over-preparing and kind of mm. doing like extensive research. Uh, and you, you know, you, you, a lot of people talk about this on the show where mm -hmm. doing research and stuff like that is almost just to kind of prove to yourself that you're doing the work. Mm, and yeah. um, and when you give that up, mm. uh, I just want to know like what you took on then. If we were to look in your tool bag, you know, mm. like uh, a lot of actors right now would show you all the books that they read about this character, all the people mm. that they sat down with for four mm. months. You open your bag now and there's none of that, but there's something there. What's there? Yeah, I think you just sort of, uh, simple kind of confidence, but I mean that in the sense of just trusting your ability and the fact that you sort of internally know how to do it anyway. Um, because yeah, I, I definitely think that, you know, doing the research and, and the images, collecting things, that's all really good. And, and I do like that. And, and I respect that. And I've done that a lot and it's really helpful sometimes, but also it's cause acting's very, intangible so you can't really you don't really have anything to show for it until you're there showing it so it is a little bit of a security blanket to be like i have done something i know what i'm doing um 
and it's, it takes a bit more sort of, I don't know, to turn up without any proof of knowing what you're doing. So, yeah. But. When you didn't have that, when you gave up the security blanket the first time, you're working without a security blanket. So, and then the, it, it worked, I guess, right? Because then you were like, I don't need that thing. Yeah. But that first time, what was that like? Like going to the set without that blanket must have been kind of crazy. I don't know. I think it just, part of it is is that, giving up that sort of security. And part of it is like laziness. And part of it is you've done it for a long time now that generally yeah. works out. So it's a bit of a, a mix, I guess. And it didn't feel like a particularly big moment or anything, just sort of being like, okay, I think I've done this. I think I know what I'm doing. I think I've got this. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you don't feel insecure or any of those things, but yeah. What is this? You know, I'm, I'm a little annoyed right, right now with people talking about other people's process, like actors talking about other actors' processes and, wow. and like having a judgment about them. I don't know how, how, how you feel about this, but it feels like, you know, if someone is not, is not reaching people, then, okay, yeah. maybe you can have a judgment about it. But if they are, mm. why are we having judgments about people's processes? Yeah, totally. I think, you know, I don't know, judgment in general is, isn't always, it just doesn't, you know, isn't helpful to anyone. So, yeah, I think, you know, whatever works for people is, is good. I mean, it's all, we're all so different. And I think it's just, you know, whatever makes you as an individual feel secure or comfortable um, is what's important. And then, you know, let other people do them. So, but it is, it's a funny, yeah, I think because acting is a very strange profession. So, you know, yeah, there's lots of different ways of doing it and treating it and, you know, and everybody's complicated. So. I was in a preview screening for tracks and I wrote on the card, I hope somebody saved this. <laughs> I, I like threatened Harvey Weinstein on the card. <laughs> like I wrote, I wrote uh, Harvey, uh, and it was expletive filled. If you mess with this film, I'll fucking kill you. Know so, something like this. Uh, uh, <laughs> Did he, he mess a bit? I, I don't. I mean, the, I think it was a botched mm. release here in the states. Mm. I, I thought the movie was amazing. Oh. Uh, I think that's just one of the many, many myriad things that uh, has gone wrong uh, with that with those hands. Mm. But mm. Um, do you, as an actor, feel like your job's done when it's over, and it's just like you got to let the other people do the do the thing or when you get to a certain a point in a career do you feel an obligation to have your hands in the post production aspect no not really i i mean i feel like as an actor i'm literally <clears throat> there to serve the director's vision like of course i'll have my opinion and i will you know suggest things or offer things up but like i think that you also have to know like the boundaries. And I think actors get really frustrated because part of the job is not having any control or any, uh, like you're, you're, you know, you're limited in so many ways. And if you don't sort of accept that, you're just really pissed off and frustrated because, you know, it is your work and you're handed over. But uh, yeah, so no, I feel very like, uh, I was going to say at peace, but I'm not sure if that's right. Like very hands off in terms of, you know, it's, it's the director's film and, and there's no point kind of, you know, meddling because um, it just doesn't ever really work out. Besides preparation process kind of changing for you over time, can you talk about just on set the approach you have with your fellow uh scene partner what what has developed for you over time in that scenario of trying to create this energy with this person is there something that you do now to kind of have that at your fingertips and and make it um, spark faster or better in the scene um not really i think i mean everybody and every scene partner is really different and um, you know, I just try to sort of, you know, respect who they are and let them do their thing. And, you know, 
sometimes you get along really well and sometimes you know it's not as as sort of easy but i think you know isn't that what it was the, one of the the first law of of uh, physics is energy cannot be destroyed or created it can only be changed <laughs> and i think you either have a good energy with someone or you don't and 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 or or it's just sort of i don't know different i i don't really know it's just uh yeah there's nothing that i really do necessarily other than you know try to get to know people and and you know be sort of respectful of, of them and their process and, and you know hope for the same so <clears throat> yeah that's all but I, I enjoy working with people and it's always really different and they enjoy working with you there's just a video on youtube of just people talking about you it's called you know mm -hmm. directors and actors uh talking about mia vazakovsky oh, i've got to find that it's just people in different interviews talking about you yeah. I have got to find that video. I was watching it thinking, this is better than any award. Having a thing you can watch when you're when you're low. Feeling a little low. I have got to find that video. It's amazing that you don't know about it. Like I would have that, uh, I, I would have people uh, on staff, like five people. Scouring, Finding those. Scouring or, you know, or the bad things too. Uh, <laughs> but what does that say about you? Like you, you, you don't, you know, you don't live in LA. You don't know no. about that video. <laughs> You're not on social media. No. What uh, what what can I gather from that information that would be true? I don't know, but you're making me feel really good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Are you, I'm, I guess I mean, are you cultivating? Have you cultivated separation from this baloney? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I. I, I live here, which is really great. And I, um, I, so I guess I dip in and out of the industry, which is really, you know, I've found that that works for me I, and, you know, that works better than being in it all the time. Um, so yeah, I guess it's a balance. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it probably wasn't working for me going back to back to back. I'm, I'm much happier with this sort of balance of dipping in and out. I started this out with a bold assumption and you didn't uh, correct me. Why? So I'm assuming it's true. So there are, there are projects out there, pro projects that we have seen, projects that we as the audience, I'm speaking of the audience, I always do that because I know exactly what they're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> projects that they didn't like that much, that they would have really liked if you were in it. Uh, things that your agents have been sending you saying you need to work this, uh, mm. this is a starring role that you can get that you haven't. So tell me why. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> which, what these roles are. Um, I don't no, but know. there is a big rejection pile on your desk. There is. And I mean, I've not always made good choices. So, you know, it's good and it's bad. It's great. I mean, I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, I, I value, I, there's lots of things to do in life and acting's one of them. And I think it's good to, you know, have perspective and, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. I think the, the reality of, of the life of acting all the time is different to the perception. So, um, you know, I didn't always enjoy it, even though I've had some really great times. I haven't, you know, it's not the most sort of fulfilling career. Well, I didn't find it that way. So there's lots of other good things to do, I think. And and that's that's all. But yeah. Mia Vazikovska, thank you so much. Thank you. Back to one is a production of Filmmaker Magazine which is a publication of The Gotham, formerly IFP. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.